you basically might be the worst judge of when you should be done. That maybe you could use somebody around you telling you like, you should embellish this part a little bit more, you know? And I don't have anybody doing that to me, but I like to think I've elaborated so much in the work I've done that when I leave little aspects that are kind of rough, that it will suit the material enough that it doesn't look like I just fell down on the job. But it's difficult. I can look back at pieces and say, man, I really needed to go in there and smooth out those areas. That rough sort of area that looks like brush strokes is not benefiting the piece at all. It's making it look uh, crudely done by hand, not well done by hand. So um, I've never of one mind about it. Like I'm never 100% happy with my work forever. Like I could be happy when I did it, look back at it later and go, oh, didn't see that then. Because your perception is getting corrupted by the amount of time you might be staring at something. You do, if you could really always put aside something for a while, return to it when you've almost forgotten what it looked like, and then have a fresh perspective of it, that's fantastic. It's the same reason that if you, in drawing a face that's completely dead on looking towards the viewer, if you've looked at it through a mirror, to see whether or not the eyes are balanced, if the sides of the face look like they properly are synced up, that's an extremely helpful tool. And I almost always remember to do that, but you know, there's certain things that your consciousness is gonna lapse on, and you wanna use as many things as you can to sort of snap yourself back in. The 1989 Batman movie had a big impression on me. I got out of college that year and uh, got into the working world that year, but I also went to a Batman-themed party that summer uh, where I dressed as the Joker with a contraption I built that would actually hold my smile open the whole time. So I bent a wire into a shape where the corners of it are sucking in the... Anyways, I don't advise doing that, but uh, it worked. Um, uh, and the movie was one of those things that, you know, made this enormous impression upon everybody at the time because graphically they took something you didn't know exactly how they could adapt it to match the comics. They weren't doing the thing of casting a guy who was that physical specimen like the comic book. They were going to do it in a new way where it was based upon treating Batman as an armored character and you know, you were interpreting him. It's like Batman as per the filter of Darth Vader, where now the cool black car he's got is matched by a cool black outfit. And it worked. It obviously was very compelling. Uh, compelling so long now that we've never actually seen something that matched the original comic version since then. And all we've got is Adam West in the gray and blue costume. But um, in any case, um, the impression of that movie and of Michael Keaton's performance was that his acting did really bring something to life that was the energy and uh, impressiveness of the character. Even as it varies from some of the comic book origins, it was what majority of us wanted to feel of how this character should be taken seriously or can be taken seriously. Not that he always has to be. Um, and uh, I was a fan enough or excited enough that I paid to see the film Torch Song Trilogy just so I could see the trailer in front of it for this movie, Batman in the theaters, which that trailer was worth it alone. This Batman image is part of a series of images I did for what was a lenticular cover that came out for Batman's 60th anniversary back in 1999. And so I had painted a series of images that were showing sort of a spotlight going across a wall that would catch him in the spotlight for a moment as he reacts to, you know, he's lifting his cape up to block you from getting a full view of him. But then part of the graphic has the cape drop and you see his chest clearly portrayed. Um, this was one of the first straight images I had done of Batman before I got a chance to work on the character for a full graphic novel. So it's unique in its point of history of when I did it. It's between when I did the future version of Batman in Kingdom Come, where he's wearing a hard armored outfit, and it's before I would start to redefine my own way of doing the character because I would eventually, with my model, who did pose for me for this exact painting, or, or series of paintings, um, I would make 
a mask based upon a head cast of him where I'd sculpted out exactly how I wanted the mask to look and I wanted it to look like it was just like makeup on a, a face, that it wasn't this three-dimensional thing jumping off of a human being, but that it was as close to his skin, like as if a human being becoming Batman is just more of a transformation. It's less about what's plausible and more about what matches what the comics always did, which is they treat cops, costumes as really just naked skin painted. And that's what I thought artistically was desired about Batman, not the practicality of, well, how well will that mask take a gunshot? Like, well, it ain't gonna take a gunshot. It's imaginary in effect. I did a number of cover compositions for Batman before I even started the gig that were just standalone shots of him in various points of posing or action. And I believe this was one that I conceived of him doing sort of a full body dive. Uh, in fact, it might also be that it was a bit of a revisitation of a sketch, a little sketch painting I did of the Batman Beyond character before. And so I was sort of doing it now as the Bruce Wayne Batman in this sort of launching like a missile shape of him and uh, and luckily because of that design standing alone it's removed from whatever the storyline was at that time for the cover it was part of so that we can still look at this piece today You know, one of the most charming parts of comic book history and television history is the Adam West Batman TV show from the 1960s. And it cast such an enormous shadow over my generation and many people to follow that this was the only time where these characters were brought to life with such detail and bright color. And there was no overthinking about how these things might be taken seriously. The idea was... If they're ridiculous, then that's charming, that's part of the fun of the show. But at that point in history, they spent real money pulling this entire show together with complicated uh, sets and costumes and, you know, pretty accurate casting for many of the characters. That this was just one of the biggest pieces of history of adapting these things that even though it's farcical in part, it's absolutely beloved and taken seriously by many of us that did grow up on it. <laughs> 